with you and it is Proverbs 31 30 and it says charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised and here we are today together to become those women who fear the Lord not a fear like shaking but a fear like a healthy respect one that makes us want to follow him one that makes us want to love him with all of our hearts and so I'm super excited to be here together today. And before we kick it off, we want to start with a prayer. Amen. And so I want to invite our amazing sister, Sharon Kirshner, up to pray. Well, it's great to see everybody. Let's bow our heads and pray together. So, <clears throat> dear Heavenly Father, just thank you so much for your love, your deep, deep love for us, God. This has been an amazing conference. We feel so just encouraged. We're full of joy, God. We pray that um, just this morning or this afternoon that you will continue to uh, bless us, help us to be reverent and, and really open up our hearts, God, to the word. And I'm just so thankful for a very, very dear and amazing friend of mine, Geraldine God. I just, she is a woman that fears you. She has uh, raised up and lifted up so many women um, all over the world. And I just, I pray that we can give her our full and Invited attention uh, today, God. Please speak through her powerfully, God. Just please uh, glorify your name in her. And uh, thank you again, God, for your precious son. We wouldn't be here, God. We're so thankful to be in 
your house and with you uh, forever and ever. And just again, thank you, God, from the bottom of our heart. We love you so much and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to take long in bringing up our speaker because I'm so excited to hear her speak. Um, you know, Geraldine Blackwell is an amazing woman. And for those of you who don't know, she is our Middle East and Southwest world sector leader, along with her husband, Corey Blackwell. And if you don't know what that means, that means that um, all of the Southwest churches, so the ones that are here, Phoenix, Tucson, Vegas, Albuquerque, and San Diego, they oversee those churches, but not just that, they oversee the churches in Dubai and have been tasked with evangelizing all of the Southwest and the entire Middle East. And I, I love it because Corey always says that God never gives you more than you are responsible enough to care for. And so what we see in that is the fact that God has deemed this woman responsible enough to care for all of the women in this room, in Dubai, and all of the lost souls across the Southwest and Middle East. And so that is just amazing. That speaks to how amazing she is. But it doesn't stop there because before she left, um, you know, the world and came into the kingdom and became, um, joined in the full-time ministry. She was a full-time fitness professional for high-profile clients, and she also went to Le Cordon Bleu, the famed cooking school. So this is a well-rounded woman who took all of her talents that she was using in the world at a very high level and has chosen to use them for God. And so I absolutely love her. You know, she is loyal, she is authentic, and more importantly, most importantly, she is loving. So let us welcome our amazing sister, Miss Geraldine G. Blackwell. Well, good morning, sisters. And Chantel, thank you so much for your warm and gracious welcome. And it is an amazing time to be able to be with you all. And I pray today that God's words will motivate, inspire you, and call you to a mountain-moving faith and leadership. So my title today is <clears throat> Mountain-Moving Leadership. And when I had an opportunity to uh, ask the women who alongside me, lead the Southwest and that are in Dubai, what do, you, what do you feel the women need to hear? And so I got a lot of great feedback. And one of the things that I want to talk about today about leadership is unity and emotion. So I looked up the word unity, and I got a very simple but profound definition. The state of being one, oneness. The state of being one and oneness. And so with that, let's go to Luke 24. And Luke 24 will be part of our time today in God's word. Thank you. And I will be seasoning in other scriptures. My prayer is today you will be able to use this sermon, this time, and go back and reflect on your quiet time. And for those that were unable to be here, or for those that you have a close sister bonding relationship, that this will be part of your conversations, your discipling times and really a structure for you to be able to move forward as we enter the second part of the year. So in Luke 24, starting in verse 1, and I'll be reading out of the English Standard Version, just FYI. The Bible says, But on the first day of the week, early at dawn, they went to the tomb taking spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling appeal, apparel. 
As they were frightened, they bowed their faces to the ground, and the Med said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. So let's stop right there. In John 20, in verse, one, in verse 11, the scriptures say that when Mary Magdalene, the women, saw Jesus, right, they were filled with fear but yet filled with joy. Picture this scene. Imagine it. These women were literally having a dialogue with angels. Have you ever thought how that must have been? In other passages, it says men. It says that their clothing was white like, like lightning. It's to reference the purity the holiness and the godliness of what was really happening. Imagine what these women, followers, disciples of Jesus, must have felt as they heard the best news in history of all the world. These women were the trailblazers for us today. When we look a little bit more closely at this period of time, women were not treated with value, with worth. This was a time as Jesus first preached the good news to the Jewish nation as he himself was a Hebrew. A woman's testimony was not even admissible under Jewish law. Yet God chose to reveal the miracle of the resurrection first to women. They were told by these angels to go report the astonishing news to the men. You see, God has always had a plan to use women to build up the kingdom of God. He has always had a plan for women to help other women climb the mountain. In Genesis 1.27, when you read it, it says God made Man and woman alike, equal. Not one over the other or not one under the other. So today I just have two simple points for you. Point number one, one with God. Point number two, oneness with one another. My question to you ladies today, do you consider Jesus, your master, your Lord, your teacher, and hold him with reverence and acknowledge that he is your savior. In your personal and private relationship with God, do you call him these things? Do you honor him and revere him as the one who has brought you salvation? See, mountain moving leadership was given to these women not because they were perfect, not because they were the most talented, not because they were like, ooh, ooh, pick me. <laughs> I'm in the crowd, Jesus. No. No. God chose these women because they made a decision to give themselves wholeheartedly and fully to the purpose of God. They were one in their relationship with God. They understood who they were. But most importantly, they knew who God was. And God elevated them trailblazers, women who would change the course of history for us today, 21st century Christian women. See, leadership isn't about just having the title. It really isn't. 
I mean, it's nice, you know. I like when people be like, oh, you know, she, she be like the world sector leader. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, it's, 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 it's nice, you know. You're like, wow. Um, but that's not really the, the, the reality in a sense, you know. Um, it's, it's just a way to have uh, a colorful title for a big responsibility. And do you, like in Matthew 28, verse 8, when you realize who Jesus is, or do you realize who Jesus is to you, are you filled with fear and joy? See, God was the one that called these women to the mountain. In Isaiah 2, 1 through 4, right? Victor powerfully preached yesterday the rock. Jesus is the rock. These women got to experience the rock one-on-one. -on -one. They got to walk with him, be with him, learn from him. And where are you today with your rock? See, mountains can be rigorous, rough, with gravel, steep, with twists and turns, hot and cold, rainy, and they can feel lonely. But do you realize who is leading you up? the mountain? Do you know who is leading the way? And do you revere him and love him and acknowledge him, not as your savior? Oh, Jesus, save me. I won't ever do that again, I promise. Right? But when he calls you to go up the mountain, do you go? Despite Jesus being deserted, and we know that Jesus and God are one, right? Jesus, Jesus is the representation of God in, in, the, in a human form. So that it gives us mankind and womankind an example to look to, right? When we are climbing that mountain, right? Despite Jesus being deserted, and how so many fled his side, which we read. It's one of the first things that God teaches us, that God puts in our hearts, right? When we're ready to confess our sin and, you know, the sisters are preparing the, the, the movie for us to see, you know, and, and we're going to read the cross, and it's the account, the physical, physical account, the spiritual account, the emotional account, the mental account of what, of what he went through. Um, we learn this, right? We learn that he was deserted, that those who were closest to him left his side. Yet, when you look at this, story, the situation that's happening here, three days later, the women went. And they were faithful women, okay? They had a deep love for Jesus. They understood who Jesus was because they knew what Jesus saved them from, right? There was a oneness that they had with Jesus, with God. They understood that Jesus was God. It was very, very embedded in them. In Luke 8, 1 to 3, you can see the, 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 the cumulation of what was happening. So these women were faithful. They had a deep love for him. And yet, despite him being a convicted, he was convicted, political criminal, 
they came to his side to tend to him, even at the tomb. Women at this time were not valued, but God saw value in them. And because of that, they acknowledged who he was and they devoted themselves to him. And because of it, they climbed the mountain and changed the world for women like us today. Are you today, sisters, whether you're 20 years old as a Christian or five months old, are you one with God? Do you have a deep love and are faithful? You see, Jesus was faithful all the way until the end and still is to this day. So are you one with God? I ask you again, if you are not, I want to challenge you and call you to repent today and make the decision to be one with God, to give yourself wholeheartedly so that in your relationship with him, he can call you and help you climb the mountain to be able not only to lead you, but that you may be able to lead other women. Because it's not just about a title. Okay? <clears throat> so point number two. Oneness with one another. So I want to ask you to look around. I, 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 it's kind of awesome being able to be up here because I get to see everybody. Right? So when you look around, right? <clears throat> My question to you, sisters, are you one with one another? Are you one with one another? Are you one with your women's ministry leader? Are you one with your shepherdess? Are you one with your sister, whether the one that's sitting next to you or whether it's the one you disciple, whether it's the one that's in your Bible talk, Mountain moving leadership is also oneness with God. And God is the one that has chosen to put who you're with in your life. And so I have, you know, part of this point, I wanted to really take the opportunity to lift up several women. And, um, you know, one of the women, many of you know her and seen her, and she's just, you know, a little spicy Latina like me, and that's Selena McKean. And when I ask myself this question, because part of a sermon when you are up here, you have, uh, you should reflect on what you're sharing. So am I one with my women's ministry leader? And humbly and graciously, yes, I am. I am one with her. What I love about Elena, and one of the things that I am growing to imitate in, in our world sector is, see, she will call you to the standard of God with expectation. Not because she's the mother of the movement, which she is. Not because she's been a Christian for almost past 40 plus years, which she has. Not only that she has been and built and led one movement, but two. She has the expectation because she expects you to do what God calls you to do. Despite what you think, feel, or may have to say. And sometimes I have a lot to say. I got a lot of things to say sometimes. I get, I get my, my discipling, discipling too, trust me. me. 
and she she, she puts, puts it out there, she listens, but the expectation is to change, to repent, to grow. Because if you want to have mountain moving leadership, you need to be one. And so, and her words are not many sometimes, but it's the expectation. Are you one with your women's ministry leader? And I want to take the opportunity to lift them all up because at times we may not be one with them because we're all different. But I want to encourage you and remind you, they have to lead you. They are the ones that have to pray over you. They are the ones that have to sometimes work out their salvation and fear and trembling to call you to the truth, whether you're gonna like it or not. And they are the ones that have to love you even when you do not want to be loved. Are you one with your shepherdess? They are the ones that have to tend the flock. And if I'm quite honest, I need a lot of hurting sometimes. I need, I need to be herded in. Because, you know, sometimes I got a lot of things to say. <laughs> or I could feel a lot about a lot of things. It's true. You know, I'm from New York originally, just FYI. So, you know, it's kind of funny, but at times it's not. And so I'm super grateful for the, the hurting that God has put in my life. Um, and He's given me a lot of great shepherdesses like Sharon Kirshner. You know, uh, Teresa Hamblin. And she's, uh, she's, she's technically not here, but she's, uh, she's always near and dear to my heart. And that's Burgundy on of the Orange County Jedi household sector. Um, and they, they, their, their, their task is, is just as important as a women's ministry leader task. Because the sheep, right, which is all of us in a sense, we can go in very different directions and have a lot of different colors and have to say a lot of different things about a lot of different sisters sometimes or situations in our life. And so they help herd the group to make sure that as the women's ministry leader moves forward, everybody is in the same cluster. You know, that there's not, one doesn't get sick, one doesn't get injured, one doesn't decide to be like, oh, nobody's gonna see me. <laughs> Or sometimes you have the rebellious ones, right? They'd be like, <laughs> they have to be willing to lay down their life and go and get the one. And sometimes that one is gonna be you. Are you one with your shepherdess? Do you value and honor and revere the roles of the women's ministry leader? Yes, but also of your shepherdess. Remembering that Jesus was the great shepherd and he himself bought the church, that is you, with his own blood. Are you one with one another? See, these women were not perfect. Each one had their own issues. They did. In Luke 8, 1 through 3, right, this is, Jesus knew his time was coming. 
God had prepared him since the beginning of time. And these women, when you read the passage, it doesn't say that they, they were with him. They were walking along. It, there was a togetherness that was there, right? And so there were many other women there. But Mary Magdalene really was the first women's ministry, ministry leader of our time. And she was not a perfect woman. Many people believe she was a prostitute, that she was demon possessed, that she was a diseased woman. In Jewish commentaries, they believe that she was a very afflicted woman and the seven demons represent each affliction. Joanna, who was a married woman, who her husband was the manager of Herod's household, Herod, the grandson of King Herod, who beheaded John the Baptist, and Susanna, who there's not a lot mentioned about her in the scriptures, but many Christian and Jewish commentators believe that she was a very sick woman. And these women changed the world and baptized and made true Christian women because you see here the revelation of how God allowed women to experience really an, an earth shattering time. So they all had their own issues. They were not perfect. They were not educated. They were not, um, you know, the creme de la creme. In many ways, we, they are like us. But are we like them? In our unity, in our oneness. Sometimes as women, 21st century Americanized women in many ways, our society, our culture, our upbringing has trained into us behaviors that will not allow us or other women to climb the mountain or to see the rock, to lead other women to the top. That's what true leadership is about. It's not about the title. It's not always about speaking. It's about helping another woman get to that mountain and get to the top. And many of the times, these things that make us up prior to getting into the kingdom, and once we get into the kingdom, and then God challenges us to grow, to change, to mature, to elevate our character, we begin to have attitudes with one another. We tend to pick at one another's differences. We tend to have quiet reservations about things that in the big picture really don't matter. Did you see her shoes? You know, I don't really like the way that she spoke to me. When you read this text, do you think she's saying it this way or that way? You know, the only reason why she's a women's ministry leader is because her husband. I mean, and she doesn't even know how to study the Bible the right way. But you know, I have to bear with her because I just, that's what the Bible says, right? Well, sis, do you really think the Bible says don't be yoked with an unbeliever? You know, 
he is kind of a Christian. I know, I know. I'm going to have one of the brothers meet him. She's just trying to tell me what to do. I think I know what's best for myself. She don't even really know me like that. Who does she think she is telling me what to do? You know, I just got to I just got to do me. Oh, the best one, the best one. I can do it better than her. I just, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, totally. I totally can. And in many ways, we think these things. And mountain moving leadership is so much more. When we look at these women, how they risk their lives to follow Jesus, to be one with Jesus, to help other women know who Jesus was, who the true rock is. So I wanna encourage each and every one of you, if you are not one with God, repent and be one with God. If you are not one with one another, repent and give yourself wholeheartedly to one another so that we can see this world evangelized in our day. Thank you. Y'all, isn't she amazing? Like, she is so dope. <laughs> I'm such a fan. <laughs> no, I know, I fangirl over her. It's okay. <laughs> um, I, I want to just remind us all of some bars that Jesus, that, uh, that Jesus, that God dropped through G today. Um, she said they understood who Jesus was because they remembered what he had saved them from. Key, women who were not valued, but God saw value in them and in us, amen? They were like us, but are we like them in our unity? And true leadership is about helping other women get to the top. So I wanna thank you, G, so much. That was an amazing lesson. That was an amazing lesson. Thank you for allowing God to speak through you so powerfully. We're gonna close out with one last song, and thank you, ladies, for coming. All right, you know the drill. Stand on up. <laughs> Woo! Wait, so get up, girl. Get up. <laughs> when I said I wasn't gonna talk about it, but I. I wasn't gonna sing about it, but I can't keep it to myself. No, I can't keep it to myself. No, I can't keep it to myself. I said I wasn't gonna sing about it, but I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me. Oh, yeah. You ought to been there. You ought to been there when Jesus saved my soul. You ought to been there. You ought to been there when you wrote my name. I 
I said I wasn't gonna preach about it, but I could keep it to myself. No, I could keep it to myself. No, I could keep it to myself. I said I wasn't gonna preach about it, but I could keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me. Oh, yeah. You ought to been there when Jesus saved my soul. You ought to been there. You ought to been there when he wrote my name. I'm gonna shout about it, but I could keep it to myself. No, I could keep, keep it to myself. No, I could keep it to myself. I said I was gonna shout about it, but I could keep it to myself. What the Lord has done.